The One Piece manga just absolutely crushed our souls by revealing the near conclusion of the epic battle between Monkey D. Garp and the former Admiral Aokiji on Pirate Islands. And I don't think that anyone expected the final result because in a shocking turn of events, Garp was stabbed straight through his gut and then basically defeated by Aokiji and the other members of the Blackbeard Pirates, which might now lead to Garp being captured or even worse, being killed in this battle with his former students. And on top of that, we of course also got even more insane powers from Garb, the Blackbeard crew, and a deeper look into the future possibilities for Aokiji in the story. But first, can we please just take a moment to appreciate just what an absolute monster Garb is as a fighter? Because in this chapter, he is essentially fighting half of an entire Yonko crew, including an Admiral level character in Aokiji, and he is still dealing massive damage to everyone. In fact, he nearly killed the massive San Juan wolf by casting casually tossing the mountain of a man into the ocean, then he blocks a flaming alcohol blast by grabbing those random pirates, and then he even has the audacity to toss the flaming bodies around the town like they were firecrackers on Independence Day. But what makes this even more impressive is that he's doing all of this while at the same time protecting the escaped prisoners and the other members of S.W.O.R.D. while they flee the islands. By the way, I'm loving the focus on his raw power during his fights, and even during some of the flashback in this chapter. I personally feel like Insane Hockey and Devil Fruits have kind of taken over the series so much, it's really nice to just see one man popping off with his fists. Although he's technically not doing all of this by himself, because Kobe, Helmeppo, and Rear Admiral Groose are also all remain on the island to allow the others to escape. And honestly though, I'm pretty sure that Garb would probably have done better by himself, honestly, because while Kobe is tricked into trying to rescue a random woman, the invisible swordsman Shiryu appears and is about to stab the marine captain. However, we then get to see just how much Garb actually cares about Kobe because he throws himself in the way and gets stabbed through the stomach, just like Whitebeard basically did back at Marine Fort. And uh, let me tell you, this moment when I read this literally made my heart skip a beat, not only because of the shock factor of the scene itself, but also seeing Garb throw himself around to protect someone else is just such a monumental change compared to his actions back at Marineford, if you know what I mean. Because if you remember, Garp also really cared a lot about Ace because he helped to raise him as a child. Well, if you consider dropping him off with a bunch of bandits, solid parenting, I guess. But anyways, to put all of this into perspective, Garp knew Ace for 20 plus years. Ace's father, Goldie Roger, even trusted Garp personally to take care of his child and ensure that he lived. And still, none of that was enough to make Garp rescue Ace or help Luffy, which is why it is so shocking to see him completely put his life on the line to rescue Kobe here. Though we have to be fair, he probably wanted to put his life on the line at Marineford, just put his work first, but I mean, wow, just how much does he care still for this pink-haired kid? And we'll discuss more of that in just a bit, but first off, Garp isn't quite out of the battle just yet. In fact, he immediately slams Shiryu's head into the pavement, which again, awesome moment, and while this deals some serious damage once again to the former Jailer, Shiryu gets the last laugh because he knows that Garp has taken a massive blow here. And it's honestly pretty lucky, I think, for the Blackbeard Pirates that Kobe was still on the island here, because without this deception, that put Kobe in serious danger, I do think that Garb probably would have definitely won this fight, am I right? Which again, what a true chat of a character. And while this battle continues, Garb is weakened, but he still has to face the massive threat of Aokiji and the rest of the Blackbeard Pirates. In fact, at the end of the chapter, we even see Garb bleeding on the ground, which leaves me thinking that he might be defeated very soon, or we could of course also see him unleash his true power. Though honestly, what we've seen so so far was already crazy enough, but we'll see. Either way, Kobe is still there to help him, but I don't really think that Kobe can take on all of these enemies by himself at the moment. However, since Garp already sacrificed himself to save Kobe, I could see him take it one step further and do something crazy like launching Kobe off the island. And if that were to be the case, that would leave Garp in a very tough situation indeed, which I honestly don't think he would escape from. And if that should happen, it would basically leave us with two incredible 
incredibly interesting options for what will happen to Luffy's grandfather after this. The first and honestly most likely option is that Garp might be captured by the Blackbeard pirates, but seriously, good luck keeping this powerhouse a hostage. Sea Stone will probably not work on him, but maybe Aokiji will freeze him or something to keep him under control. Anyways, this option is pretty likely to occur because in this chapter, we even were told that his cross guild bounty is 3 billion berries, which is actually an extremely interesting number because we also learned that this is the exact same amount as most marine admirals and you might even remember that this is exactly equal to Luffy's current bounty as well. So, so I guess this might be Oda's way of telling us that Luffy is only now catching up to Garp's level or maybe Garp is on Luffy's level? Well, whatever way you want to look at it. I'm not too sure, but if Garp is captured, then he could actually be used as a bargaining chip that Blackbeard described back in chapter 1080 here. Because remember, the evil Yonko's whole plan for capturing Kobe in the first place was to try to ransom him to the world government in exchange for Pirate Island being officially recognized as a kingdom by the world governments. And while that ultimately wouldn't work with Kobe because he is a member of SWORD, Garp might be the perfect marine to hold for ransom in his stead. That's because he's basically the most famous marine in the world and he is called the literal hero of the marine. So if the world government didn't do anything in their power they could to rescue him, it could turn into a disaster that could cause even more people to lose faith in their leadership than already have recently. But let's say that Blackbeard didn't want to deal with Garp here, an even more incredible option might be that he could also turn Garp over to the cross guilds to turn in that juicy bounty and it doesn't even take too much speculation to think that this could lead us to a reverse sort of marine fort. What I mean by that is that we could have a situation where instead of the marines executing a pirate, like they did with Ace, we instead could have pirates executing a famous marine. And I mean, can you just imagine the chaos something like this might cause with Buggy broadcasting the show to the entire world? It would be absolutely insane. And once again, Luffy's family on the line, of course. Which of course brings us to an even bigger question. Would Luffy come to save Garp? I mean, with all the crazy events going on on Egghead Island right now, it is really hard to say, but with Ace already dead, it's kind of hard to see Luffy not trying everything to save his grandfather. And yes, while it's clearly still too early to really speculate any more than that possibility, the other option for Garp's future is that he simply dies during this battle here on Pirate Island. And while I personally don't really see that happening right now, you can say that Garp doesn't have a ridiculous number of death flex on him. I mean, let's let's count them, shall we? First of all, he is a likable, older mentor type character with no super clear role in the story right now, except maybe to inspire people. Does that uh, remind you of anyone? Plus, he is the family of the main protagonist and we've just seen him save one of his favorite students while battling another former student. And really, if this is not on your stereotypical checklist of shonen death flags, then I really don't know what would make it on that. But if we're taking this option actually seriously, then we do have to consider what would be the purpose of Garb dying here on Pirate Islands. Would it be just to inspire Kobe? I mean, he did shout out that justice would prevail, but as a certain pink flamingo once told us, justice is determined by whoever wins the war. And so while inspiring Kobe is certainly possible, although a little weird since we haven't really seen Garb and Kobe interact a ton in the story, there's actually one other option that was hinted at during all the flashback scenes in this chapter. And that's because because in this chapter we do see that Garp developed a deep bond with Aokiji as well and the former admiral truly respected his former teacher. And of course we'll discuss more about their relationship in just a second and what it means for Aokiji's future role, but for now I wonder if Garp's defeat here is actually a massive red herring for us and Oda is just really trying to trick us all. You see, back in chapter 1080 some members of Blackbeard's crew here were suspicious of the former admiral joining their ranks. However, killing Garp would definitely show them once and for all all that Aokiji is on their side. So could Garb really be doing all of this on purpose to help Aokiji with some sort of secret important mission to infiltrate Blackbeard's base? If you want to think about it that way, it's kind of like in Harry Potter when Professor Snape killed Dumbledore to gain the bad guy's trust. Although to be perfectly honest, I don't really know how willing Garb would be to sacrifice himself since he wasn't already dying as Dumbledore.
Dumbledore was. But while we don't know if Garp still trusts Aokiji this much, he certainly trusts Kobe to be the future of the Marines, and I've always wondered why exactly that is. I mean, is it as simple as Garp seeing something special in the way that Kobe thinks about justice? I mean, Kobe will do whatever is right, no matter the situation. We saw an example of this at Marineford when he stood up to Akainu, and even recently in chapter 1080, when we saw that he was perfectly happy to work with this ghost girl if it meant that he could continue his duty. Or if it isn't just Kobe's strong sense of fair justice, another option is that Garb actually knows something very special about Kobe that we don't. For instance, we don't really know Kobe's family lineage. We just met him on this random boat in chapter 2 of the story, but maybe Garb does know more about Kobe and he has a clue about some future special ability that Kobe has inside of him. I mean, honestly, at this point, it's certainly possible considering all the new family dynamics surrounding other characters with interesting hair colors that we've been getting in recent chapters. Just see Vivi and Shanks. But whatever Garb's reason for believing in Kobe, I can't imagine that the young Marine doesn't survive this battle. So I'm pretty sure we'll learn more about his super important role in the story very soon. And by the way, if you want to make sure to hear all about the changes Kobe will bring to the world in future chapter reviews, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more One Piece content just like this. But now, just like Kobe, these slime balls are also going to play vital roles in the final saga. And in this chapter, we once again see that the theme of the Blackbeard Pirates is to win using tricks and deception. I mean, come on, we saw it in Impel Down and at Marine Fort, and here, once again, when they trick Kobe, which led to Garp being stabbed again. In fact, we will undoubtedly see some sort of devious scheme when they face the Straw Hats. I mean, you can be very sure of that. For example, they could kidnap a crew member. Looking at you, Miss Archaeologist, or maybe somehow they actually managed to get a traitor on the crew, which is kind of hard to imagine, but who knows? Whatever it really is, one nearly certain thing is that Zoro will also have to deal with Shiryu's dishonorable fighting style, especially considering his famous quote back during his duel with Mihawk, that scars on the back are a swordsman's greatest shame. And in this chapter, we also get a better look at the powers of Vasco Shot. If you remember, it was recently revealed that he ate the liquor fruit, and we just now saw him spit out a steam of flammable alcohol alcohol that he somehow set on fire. However, what I personally thought was even more impressive were these truly massive arms that Avalo Pizarro shot out of the island using his insane devil fruit. I mean, seriously, what's the deal with all these devil fruits? They do seem incredibly overpowered, given that everyone in the One Piece world basically lives on an island. Though I do have to say that none of these was nearly as impressive as Aokiji's mastery of his devil fruit and especially his really overpowered hockey that we finally got to see in this chapter. And really, I don't care about the power scalers who are definitely gonna say that Garp was already weak, which, yeah, fair enough, but Aokiji's hockey-powered fists still absolutely send Garp flying, so kudos to this ice-cold dude here. And even though Aokiji got thrown back as well, obviously, that's still incredibly impressive, considering that Garp is likely one of the strongest hockey users in the entire world. Now, that's not to say, though, of course, that Aokiji shouldn't be thankful thankful to Garp, because he would have likely never gotten to this level of power without Garp's training from the past. And that's because in this chapter, we finally also see in flashbacks that Garp actually personally trained and eventually befriended a young Kuzan. The former admiral even trained so hard that he could beat up those giant old warships on the same level as Garp himself. But what's even more impressive is that Garp seemed to somehow consider Aokiji a friend that he could talk to about his problems. For instance, he mentions that his grandson Luffy wants to become a pirate and that his son Dragon started the Revolutionary Army. Wait, hold on. That is kind of incredibly important, right? I mean, if Dragon is actually Garp's son and not just his son-in-law, that could mean that... Well, let's, let's save that discussion for another day. The one thing that is still really bugging me is that Oda is really trying to make us believe here that Aokiji truly wants to work for Blackbeard and is evil. Even though Aokiji's justice motto is lazy justice, to me he's always seemed like the guy who wants to really do the right thing, but he was still searching for answers. And to speculate on what he might actually do in the future, let's briefly go over his character arc so far in the story. In case you don't remember, it all started back in chapter 321, during this 
this fight, Luffy challenged him to a one-on-one -on -one duel so that the Admiral wouldn't go after the rest of his crew. And even though Aokiji at that point easily defeated Luffy, Aokiji didn't kill the Straw Hat Captain and he honored the terms of the duel by not chasing after the crew. Then we had a boatload of information about the Icy Admiral during Robin's flashback where Aokiji was part of the group that destroyed the scholarly island of Ohara. And Aokiji even appeared to go so far as to kill his friend Saul after the giant had betrayed the Marines. But then in the very same chapter, Aokiji seemed to recognize that Saul desperately wanted to save Robin for some reason and he decided to let Robin go instead of killing her like he was ordered to. And to me, this means that he clearly inherited Saul's dream that Robin should live. This idea is further supported by Robin and Aokiji's talk outside the banquet after Enda's lobby. He tells her that maybe she can answer the question of why Saul wanted her to live, so really he seems to be searching for answers that he can't discover for himself. Plus, later on we find out that Aokiji didn't actually kill Saul, so there seems to be a lot of internal conflict for what Aokiji truly believes. In fact, allegedly at least, after the time skip, Aokiji left the Marines because he didn't want to work under the blood thirsty Akainu. We next see him in chapter 698 when he actually saves Vice Admiral Smoker from being killed by the Warlord of Flamingo. And really, this scene shows us that Aokiji still is a good person who cares about his friends and the overall safety of the world. Which honestly to me makes it just impossible to believe that he is truly evil now and joined the Black Bay Pirates just to take over the world. I mean, Oda's trying to sell it really hard, but I just don't buy it. But then again, maybe he just really wanted to be a pirate to have a fun time tossing back the booze with the boys like we saw in chapter 1080. Who knows? And honestly, it kind of makes me really curious to think about what Aokiji's journey might have looked like if he had decided to be a pirate from the beginning. I mean, with his powers, he would absolutely be a massive threat to become a Yonko or even find the One Piece. And so I went ahead and thought out exactly how his pirate adventure and that of the other admirals could have gone in this video right here, which you can watch right now if you want to. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next chapter.